Thank you, everybody, for watching the Matt Black Show once again. And now we actually have the Halloween edition of the Matt Black Show. Uh, basically, the way this is going to work is what we're going to do is have a 30 minute interview here of these musicians, the DJ and the musician. And then after 30 minutes, what we're going to do is play a live set for you to hear and jam out. So I hope a lot of you people out there are having Halloween parties and uh, play my show during it. And uh, we will not disappoint you. It'll be. Definitely wild and crazy and uh, entertaining for you. Uh, so, so far, let's go ahead and get into these musicians and DJ's mind. So, Redman, go ahead and tell a little bit about yourself for the listeners out there. Well, I'm, um, I'm DJ Redman. I, I live over in Sandy Springs. Um, been DJing about uh, four years, uh, even though the running joke is that I did uh, teach Jesus how to love fidget music. <laughs> and uh, I'm just really glad to be here. That's cool. What about like where you grew up and uh, stuff like that? I grew up in uh, grew up in West Texas. I've, I've lived kind of all over. Yeah. Every place from uh, you know Louisiana to California. I did a, uh, eight years in the U.S. military, okay. in the Navy, and traveled all over the Southeast Asia, and uh, got to see different girl in different port. <laughs> <laughs> and uh you know I, I moved here to atlanta i really love it here I'm, i'll probably never leave oh, okay yeah that's cool the uh casey the alien yeah, go ahead and tell the listeners out there a little bit about yourself what you um, play where you grew up Cassie, yeah that's right uh they call me uh Cassie the alien blues dude um uh, where i grew up I, yeah yeah um uh, let me see i grew up in brooklyn oh, okay that's where i started and um, then from there, it went out to outer space, pretty much. <laughs> and uh, what was the other question? <laughs> um, this basically like, uh, what kind of music do you play? Do you just jam out on the guitar? Or? Um, I actually started like Red Man DJing uh, way back in the seventies, DJing in Good New York. Uh, doing vinyl and um you know well like i was telling them before that i uh remember seeing uh madonna come into the club with cassette tape uh -huh. the borderline trying to get the djs and my buddies to play it you know and um that was way back then i remember when they had the first uh rap record that was with international disco corporation you get free records when you have a letterhead from an owner club owner oh cool and All they right. would send us albums and i remember getting you know uh sugar hill gang rappers delight and in brown rapper <laughs> 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 and uh we you know um you know was playing that and playing uh the trams and donna summer and all that and of course when i put the rap record on you know the clubs when the club went crazy yeah. you know and after that uh then one day um I heard Jimi Hendrix, you know, on guitar. He, he jams out on his solos, yeah. And uh, that I started jamming guitar. Okay. And then I ended up doing rock band, singing in a rock band and jamming in a rock band, a Jimi Hendrix cover band called Noise or Us. Are you in a band now? Uh, no. Um, I've just been jamming guitar lately with, with DJs. Okay. You know, um, started DJing. Uh, like I was telling Red Band, I was DJ, uh, jamming with DJ Logic one time. It was a pretty cool gig up in the at Mountain Jam. You know, Warren Haynes and all the guys there. And, um, jamming in, uh, in the club with DJ Logic. And um, Mike Gordon of Fish came up to me. 
<laughs> and he was saying that I was wailing. I didn't know who it was because it was really dark in the club, but, you know, uh, it was like um, fun, you know? I yeah. just started getting into jamming guitar with DJs and then started doing techno and house music and chill and, you know, uh, with different DJs. And it was, that's how I get into it. I like that. Um, Redman, how basically, what was your favorite thing to do before music? Listen to music. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's that's. You came out of the womb listening to music. Oh, pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. I mean, I I started like listening to like just like uh, Kazzy was saying earlier with the the Sugar Hill Gang and Grandmaster Flash, yeah. Furious Five, all all of that kind of stuff that that my friends thought was like well, what the what the heck is that? Yeah, you know, and and I've always kind of been on the cutting edge or the leading edge, you know, and. Uh, I got into this music, listening to it at least, probably 10 years ago. Okay. Yeah, and just always listen to it, always listen to it. And, and then I started seeing some videos on the web, and it's like, wow, that looks really cool, watching DJs do their thing. And I said, I think I can do that. <laughs> and so I basically just went and dropped the money and bought the gear and taught myself how to DJ. I love that. Yeah. How about you? Uh, what did you do before you started um, playing music? Did you have any like hobbies or anything? or? Read um, books or uh, jump off buildings? <laughs> no, I was uh, <laughs> basically doing uh, karate. I was into martial arts a lot and doing, um, you know, I started doing Ishinru karate. And then I went into, when I got into seeing Bruce Lee movies, I got into Wing Chun Kung Fu. And then, you know, started getting into his other style, Jeet, uh, Jeet Kune Do. And um, started doing, getting into martial arts. I was really into martial arts a lot, you know. That's cool. So you're an alien that kicks some ass. <laughs> no, I'm a peace-loving alien. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, let's go ahead and ask you guys this question. Um, what is the craziest environment you have ever played in? Oh, I got it. Since he was talking about Texas, um, they paid me one time to come play in Texas. And uh, I played in a rave in a cow field. Uh -huh. And it was really in Commerce, Texas. And, um, you know, they paid me, so I flew out there. Uh, what the heck? And, I, and I, it was funny because I got out there, and I was like, we're in the middle of a cow field. What, what, we're going to play here? <laughs> Once I got into the middle of the woods in the cow field or yeah. whatever, um, they, they had turntables and lights set up, and it was... It was it's like a modern it woodstock. Was, it was great, yeah. They, they had all the generators going, and the kids really had it hooked up, you know. Uh, I was doing the green alien that night, but I don't do that anymore. Is there a reason why you don't do the green alien anymore? I uh, just like to do the grays, you know, because the grays are, there's more of them, you know, okay. populating the earth and stuff like that. Visi more more visible, alien. you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So. I like that. How about you, Redman? Craziest environment you ever played in? I, I think probably the craziest, the craziest stuff that happens, happens at house parties. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, you're going to have people there that are, your inhibitions are down, you're with a group of friends, you can get away with a lot of stuff that you can't get away with necessarily in a club or other venue, um, a lot of nudity going on, I ain't mentioning no <laughs> names, but uh, yeah, pro probably house parties is is, uh, is where it's at as far as the craziness goes. That's cool. I do enjoy that. It's, uh, you know, I think one of the craziest places I've ever played it was probably a like the other last DJ that was on here was probably a, uh, a swingers party, but um, you know everybody knows what goes on there. So let's go ahead and shoot to this question: the positive, the, the positive uh, aspects of today and the negative. Let's go ahead and shoot with the positive. Um, Casey the alien. Casey. Casey. I gotta but get that right. I'm gonna get pimp Kazzy, slapped in a little bit. Snazzy, jazzy, <laughs> it's all the same. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> His piece will turn to a slap across the face if I keep No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Never. No, no. He's, he's so you're really saying nice. the po the positive and yeah, negative yeah, side yeah, of Yeah, yeah, the positive like? side. Since you uh, since you play guitar and you know a little bit about DJs, what's your your positive aspect of today, today's generation? Um, what do you think about that? I think the positive thing is um I'd have to say is the internet because that really opened up things for people to collaborate. Like I've collaborated with people from the UK, from Brazil, um, different countries that would never talk to each other. And it's really a great thing to open up different nationalities, 
you know, you have the translators on the computer, so you don't have to talk the same language, but yet you still talk the same language. Once they translate it, you notice that we're all talking peace, love, and having a good time and yeah. relaxing, you know? I do enjoy that. How about you, Redman? Um... I guess I'd probably have to say the 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 new kids that are coming into the scene. Yeah. Um I, I like the I like the attitude and the camaraderie that they that they tend to have. Now you're gonna have the types that are gonna just wanna go to the party and get messed up. Yeah. But but for those kids that come that are saying, Oh wow, hey, this is something new, this is something cool, let me go check this out and then they start coming back. Yeah. It's when you start to see them at that second and that third and that fourth party that that kind of gives you some hope for, you know, the new generation. Because this this type of music that, that I particularly play and a lot of these a lot of the other DJs, even like yourself, once once the scene gets a little older, they kind of drift away and they go away. If you don't always have that new influx of people, yeah. the scene will die. The scene that's will die. True, yes. So, so I, always bringing new ears and new people into the scene. That's that's what I'm really all about. It's kind of like the older hippies had little baby hippies, and now they're getting yeah. into the the new age hippiness. <laughs> that's cool. I do like that. Um, what about the negative? The negative. The negative oh. thing. If there was anything negative about the scene today, anything you would change or a little advice out there, what would that be? Mm, that's 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 a tough question. The negative thing about the scene. Um. I couldn't really. Uh, There's always a little of, bit of advice. Maybe somebody's doing too much influence of substances, or maybe that venues need to have certain kind of different things, or just just anything out there. You know. I uh, I just think there should be more peaceful. Uh, just be not so uh, like you know. Seriously? I've gone to a, a house party or something like a club where they've had you know techno and rap together, and they ended up being a problem because they would disagree with each other and everything. And, you know, I play guitar with rap artists, yeah. and I play guitar with techno artists. I play, you know, it, and it's better if they just gave each other their hour or whatever and get together and get along, you know? Don't, just because you thing, do different yeah. music doesn't mean you have to disagree. Yeah. Appreciate, collaborate. That's true. How about you? Oh, I, I think, I, I mean, I, I try to stay away from negativity um, as much as I can, I I, I, I want to be positive about this scene. I want to be positive about this music. Um, probably, probably the the negative thing that I see that's going on right now is is all of the infighting among the promoters. I think the DJs pretty much all get along. You know, we we don't play the same style of music, but I give you your space, you give me mine, and we don't we don't diss each other. You know. Do you mind if I this? Um, it's kind of sure. like that. You know, it's kind of almost a problem with DJs, too. It's like everybody is, is so worried about make, being big and being the top notch, and I'm the coolest this, I'm the coolest that, instead of just doing what you love. It doesn't matter about the other person, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. If, uh, if, I think if all of us would just um, remember that it's about the music. Yeah. We're it's all about anyways, the music. You know? Might as well just enjoy what Yeah, and doing. the music is still going to be here after we're long gone, and other people are going to be doing it. So just enjoy your time. Yeah. That's cool. That is what, what this show is all about. Just remember that. It's uh, saying what you think and uh, play it loud. So let's go ahead and throw this out there. Uh, either one of you are welcome to answer this. Uh, being a DJ or a guitar player, musician, what have you, when you create a set or a song, what comes into play? Physical memories or mental memories or just sounds good? Go with it. Um, well, I have to say that sometimes... Uh the, the chords will come out first. Okay. The chords on the music will come to me first. And then afterwards, I'll write the words. And other times, I'll have the lyrics first. Okay. And then I'll have to um, search for the, you know, the music afterwards and add it on, you know? It depends how the feeling goes, you know? Um, I, I pretty much play whatever feels good. Okay. So you yeah. don't make like a pre-made set if somebody says come out and throw a party and um I've I've done that. Yeah. I, I try I try not to do it. Yeah. Um do it for feeling. Yeah, yeah, it's it's all it's all about the the feeling and and it's got to have a good groove. If if I'm not wanting to dance to it, I don't even want to play it because other people aren't going to want to dance to it. Yeah, true. That is you true. know. Yeah. 
Have any of you guys been in tours or played out of the country or anything? Uh, well, actually, I was touring with a deaf drummer. Uh, wow. He's passed away since in 2003 from cancer. Um, name, his name was Sean Dale Barnett. And um, he, was, he was actually living with Lane Staley of Alice in Chains for a while. And um, uh-huh. many stories he told me about that, which I won't t- bore you with now. But I was touring with him. It just so happened through the Internet. I, I met him, and he said, what's this alien stuff? junk what's this about and i was yeah. like well, well what's this deaf drummer stuff and he goes well i'm coming to orlando and uh <laughs> come on let's jam together and i go okay and um we ended up touring i toured with him for a year and um so that was one for me i guess yeah yeah well redmond go for it what was the question <laughs> <laughs> i got so interested in the story i just <laughs> I, I got lost there <laughs> Any tours, uh, some of the places that you played at? You ever been overseas? Um, well, no, I've never played overseas. I've been overseas. Yeah. But, uh, no, I mean, I've, I've played, I mean, obviously here in Atlanta. And um, What uh, places overseas have you been? Oh, wow. <laughs> um, Thailand, Korea, Japan, um, Hong Kong. Okay, cool. Um, Saudi Arabia. Wow. All, all of those places, but as far as as far as DJing goes, I, I mean Atlanta, Nashville, Alabama, pretty oh, yeah. yeah, just those those three states. Good old hometowns. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that comfortable feel. What in your mind do you think is the best way to DJ or musician? The best way to yeah, the best way. Um, well, I think you think like electric guitar or acoustic guitar or what. Uh, well, I jam both like, acoustic and electric, but I usually, like when I'm jamming like with DJs, for instance, uh, I try to not drown the DJ out and be louder than the DJ, and it's works the same thing with the bands, Very you know, to be, like that, yeah. uh, check your levels, you know, and try to be the, uh, you know, not ab- above anyone else in the levels, you know what I mean? Uh, unless you're like a Jimi Hendrix, then you're going to be flashy and putting a guitar on fire, yeah. but... um. <laughs> That's a different thing, you know. Uh, you know, when I done Jimi Hendrix st- stuff, I you get loud, you know. Uh-huh. But um, uh, usually it's just trying to balance out and be on even keel with everybody else, you know. That's cool. Not drown anybody out, I think. How about you there, Red Man? Um, best way to DJ just do your thing and play the music that you love. What about you though? Since we're uh. Talking to a DJ here, do you like the the vinyl, the wax, Ableton, or what? Um, CDJs. I mean, I've I've always done CDJs. You know, like I was telling you guys earlier, uh, I kind of came into the scene and the whole DJing thing when when CDJs were really becoming popular. Yeah, it was a new and, thing. Yeah. yeah, and and you know, and I kind of tossed around. Well, do I want to really learn vinyl? And and it just it just kind of occurred to me that well okay it seems like the CDs are the way of the future vinyl is still very cool i love to watch people spin vinyl yeah but you know if i'm going to drop $3000 on gear i want to do it one time and be done i don't want to start with something and and build up yeah yeah and then you know cdjs will always have that you know will always be there so you know i don't see them going away anytime soon what if if you guys had all the money in the world? Basically, what would be your uh, equipment you would choose? Your, I mean, what, what, what would be the most expensive equipment out there that you would go to a store and buy for yourself? What do you think is the best stuff out there? Well, I mean, pro- I mean, obviously they have the uh, they have the Pioneer CDJ two thousands out now. Yeah, I probably have a set of those. I would probably keep with the with the eight hundred mixer. Well, I just that's I what just the, the last love guy it. said. Yeah, that's what I the last guy it. said. He he said is. He has rain mixer and his, uh, his 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 tables. You know that's what he likes. So yeah. Oh, that's um. Well, when I was DJ and I used to have the old time stuff. I was doing vinyl, so <laughs> <laughs> I used to do you know techniques, turntables, and new mark and all that. And you know I, I was. Stuff. But I mean, when it comes to guitars, I mean, I would do you know, PRS, Paul Reed Smith, uh, something like that. You know, and and uh, um. Fenders, I, I I like you know Fender Stratocaster stuff like that you know, and uh, you know basic stuff. I mean um, when it comes to amplifiers, I just have a a good old hundred watt 
Jimmy Stack Marshall. Yeah. You know, that's good enough for me. <laughs> I like that. That's cool. Let me go ahead and uh go ahead and keep that mic there. Since um when did you start doing this uh the the alien thing? I mean, is this uh Tell a little ah. bit about tell a little bit about that. That did, did you just did you just grow up into that? Uh no, right that up? actually happened one time when I was up in the Casco Mountains and I saw a UFO okay. one night. It was coming from my friend's house and I saw a UFO and um I hadn't been drinking or anything. Yeah. Or imbibing. And I just um was flicking the headlights on and off because there was so many deer up at the Ellenville Mountains, upstate uh -huh. New York. They're all over the road and as I came around the mountain, there was a UFO there, and I flicked the lights right on them. I right my brights right on them. So they returned the favor and blinded me, you know? And I was like, I had to stop the car, and I got out of the car, and then the UFO was stopped right there uh -huh. in midair and um, completely illuminated, and I could see the aluminum, brushed aluminum of it like a, like a pot yeah. <laughs> or a pan. And, um, wow. and then it disappeared. And then it reappeared like a mile down the road in the valley there. And um, I was still standing outside my car, and I was like, what the heck is this? And then it just went straight up, you know, and disappeared. You yeah. know? And then after that, after I, I started playing guitar and doing the Alien after like that. that. That's really cool. I do. I, I believe in everything out there. I don't believe that there's just, uh, you know, there's, there's always something else out there. We are not the only planet with an organism living so i do believe in that that's cool how'd you get the name redmond just use the derivative of my of my last name redden <laughs> and just and just put man at the end <laughs> i mean that's it's pretty simple it, that's that's kind of where it came from <laughs> i like that uh let's go ahead and do a little bit of the crazy questions for some of you people out there don't know what this is, this is just off-the-wall crazy questions. Anybody out there is welcome to throw in on the chat, as I see some people here watching, and uh, just off-the-wall questions, you know, and just anything really odd. Um, so let's go ahead and throw this one in there that I like to do pretty much every show, but it always gets a little weirder every time. So let's say this. Let's say that you basically got married and... Um, just just some crazy wild person out there. Who knows who it is? Might not be the person you're with now or later. I don't even know. It's nobody's business. But figure to speeching, uh, figure to speech that you actually won millions and millions of dollars. And now, basically, that girl that you're with sued you for everything that you have. Yep, you have nothing left except for $5. You found an old pair of pants from a wash from a long time ago. But unfortunately... You're stuck now underneath the bridge with a little guy named Bob. And uh, Bob's just there chilling with you. You're just hanging out, you know, you're just hating on yourself. But do you hate on yourself and just hang out there with Bob? Or you might go be able to find a turntable or a guitar. Let's say that you had just a turntable and a guitar sitting there by your side. What would you do since you have nothing left but $5 and one piece of equipment? What would you do at this point? I'd probably uh, put Bob to work trying to find me some kind of gig to play. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's 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 the only thing. What else are you going to do? Yeah. I mean, e even if you hock the stuff, you're not going to get much for it. <laughs> you might get another 15 bucks, and then what? Somebody said uh, prostitute Bob, you know, make some money. But <laughs> If you're under the bridge with Bob? Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Right away, when you say under the bridge, I think of Kurt Cobain and yes. Seattle. Cause there you he go. was uh, he, wrote, he, he wrote a lot of good songs when he was under that bridge. But anyway, I would think about, I agree with Red Man. Uh, you, you're not going to get much if you try to sell your equipment. Uh, and and it's, a, it's an unwritten law anyway. You never sell your axe. You never sell your guitar. I, well, what I would do is probably try to write a song under the bridge. You know? I like that. See if uh, Bob knows how to sing. <laughs> and then try to get some work. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Question always shows the love for the music. That's one of the main reasons I always say that. Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, what is the wildest party or uh, a wild story you can go ahead and tell the listeners out there that uh, you care to share? Wow. Okay. Um, 
Back uh, earlier this year, uh, I played the the uh, the Tron One party. Uh huh. Yeah. And uh, and I don't I don't know that this is for some of the people out there though. Where was this Tron party? And it was held here in Atlanta downtown okay. at, a, at a place called Two High Studios. All right. And uh, I I don't know for a fact that this happened, but I had several people come up and tell me that during my set, this guy got so excited and could no longer contain himself that. He, he basically pooped his pants. <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah, and and then yeah. didn't leave the dance floor just because he was so he was into the music and and wouldn't leave. That's probably the craziest thing that's ever happened. Hopefully, to God, he didn't have a girlfriend. I mean, how do you go home? Man, he was so good, I just shit myself. Man. Wow. <laughs> I go, where's the bathroom? Well, the line's really long. Well. Somebody just throw some aerosol at him, just kind of like shoot it with a gun so it explodes all over his body and he finally smells good so people That's don't crazy. die. That's hilarious. God, I would need another shot after that. How about you? Uh, you saying like the what craziest part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the like a most a craziest experience you've or a, a wild story you could tell the listeners about, you know. Oh. Some of the, gosh. you know, places you played the, at. I think the 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 one one crazy party was um I'll never forget it. It was Alex Gray's Halloween party. It was Halloween yeah. too, 2009, and uh, and his uh, mansion, the Cosm Mansion. It's the Chapel of Sacred Mirrors, and there was so many people there, and there was so many crazy costumes. Like uh, it was amazing. It was yeah. like a movie almost, <laughs> you know. And 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 when you go inside Alex Gray's mansion in there, he's got statues, and uh, outside that he's got a real skeleton. Because he used to work in a morgue. Oh, and, wow. and there was a real skeleton hanging there, you know. That's crazy. And um, uh, he was selling paintings at the party for 15000 each. Oh, wow. You know? Yeah. Like, uh, but um, it was it was really amazing. You know, I, can, I, I went as the Great Pumpkin. Oh, okay. You know, but um, it was pretty cool. It was, it was, the, just the costumes was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. It was crazy. I like that. What year do you think would be the best time to throw a party and explain? You know, you can go back all the way before even uh, humans were here. Or, or uh, I mean, hell, I don't know what you'd really play on, but um, maybe you should just rattle on some, you know, little microscopic organisms or something. Have sex with them, who knows. Or, uh, you know, wait to the uh, way, way future. What, do you, what would be your take on that? Uh, my my first my first love was house music. You know, when I when I first started to play, I played house and trance. Okay. And and I and I was always you know in love with these guys, Frankie Bones, Frankie Knuckles, the the old school guys, uh, Derek May, Derek Carter. Uh, I think I think probably back in the '80s. Even though we'd all be spinning on wax, I, I'm fine with that. See, so like the '80s. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. How about you? Before we uh, shut it down and flip it around for the, uh, um, hope everybody's ready for that. If I was going to go to a party, I'd have to say uh, I'd want to go to Woodstock, 1969. Yeah. Because I think that was the best party they ever had. And, um, and obviously you'd probably play in uh, guitar, right? <laughs> yeah, if I could get up there. But um, uh, am I doing it? Yeah, uh, you know, I think that was like an uh, amazing party. You know, a million or something people... Uh, probably more in three days and totally peaceful and loving. And, uh, you know, they tried many times since that th day to do concerts yeah, like that, but um, they can't. Yeah. But it's good that they try, you know. Yeah, the damn government always uh, stopping us from our freedom, even though they say America is still free. Well, somewhat. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how the future goes, you know. We might all have, like, little shackles and stuff around our ankles, and they'll tell us exactly where we are with a little GPS signal. How free is that? How ridiculous. But um, right now we're going to go ahead and shut it down and flip it around. So hope everybody enjoyed the uh, interview here. Any more questions and comments, go ahead and throw them in there. I mean, uh, we'll answer them as we keep going on here. Uh, the mics will probably much be turned off during the DJ session and the jam out on the guitar as your uh, ears will tweak. But um, there you go. Enjoy. And thank you, everybody, for watching the Matt Black Show. So you have a one-hour set and then a 10-minute conclusion after that. And there you go. Flip it up there. Yeah. Keep it on it. Flip it up there. All right. Keep it. Here we go. Here we go. So what we need to do? We got two minutes here. Boom! Hope everybody's ready. I'm a short little.
Speakers, that's not my fault. About as ready. Nine to seven seconds. People on Amsterdam, make sure you do what you do. Do what you do.
Life is like a club. Life ain't fun if you ain't in trouble. Fools wanna rumble, fools wanna blow down. I try to stick a chick in every city I go. Life is like a club. Life ain't fun if you ain't in trouble. Fools wanna rumble, fools wanna blow down. I try to stick a chick in every city every town. Hating on me, you get the fuck back. Murder the trap, the big booty clap. Finger snap, talk and smack. You bout to get cracked with a baseball bat. Hey, 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 hey.
As everybody's watching right now, we're actually going to cut this break a little short here, so hope you're ready. All right, scoot the mic a little bit closer here. Thank you, everybody, watching the Matt Black Show. I hope you do uh, enjoy that. That was actually, I would say, badass, because uh, <laughs> I couldn't quit moving. I'm out of breath. That's awesome. That's how it should be, you know? That's the whole point of the show is just... And dance your ass off, enjoy yourself, you know. Some stuff stuff's real nasty on here, you know, some stuff's just hopping, energetic, just uh love, danger, death, it doesn't matter, you know, always enjoy yourself. And uh somebody said thanks. That was awesome. Uh thanks for playing guys. So uh my little props to uh, what was that? Fairy Kiss. We also had uh who else on here? Uh a couple other people. Some of it's hard to pronounce, but um once again, thank you for watching the Matt Black Show. Let's go ahead and get the thoughts from the uh, musicians here and uh, see what they thought about it and a little bit of shout-outs if they want to give it. Well, I just, you know, I just want to thank uh, you, Matt, for having us on. You know, this was really a, a great pleasure for me to be able to play with such a great instrumentalist with, uh, with Kazzy and um, uh, really enjoyed it, really enjoyed it. I hope I can do it again. hope yeah. I can do it again. <laughs> Any shout-outs? Well, Miss uh, Miss Fairy Kiss, she's out there. She knows who she is. <laughs> <sighs> cool. That was really great. Yes, thank you very much for having me here. And Red Man, I'm telling you, you, you can kick them beats. That's pretty kicking, man. I'll tell you. <laughs> you know what I mean? You keep it going. I can see how you can keep the party going. You know. And I I, I really appreciate you letting me jam the guitar good, for a little man. bit. I, you know. I really enjoyed that too. That was that was good. Thank you. That was, was very times. good. It was fun. It was fun. I loved it. <laughs> Any uh, people you want to shout out to? Uh, shout out? I want to shout out to Earth. A shout out to Earth. Uh, you guys, calm down and be be peaceful. And uh, it doesn't matter what color or what country you're from. Just take it easy. You know, we're all on on the planet. You know what I mean? And I gotta come all the way from out of space to tell you guys this. You know, calm down. <laughs> all right. Hell yeah, one hell of a fantastic show. Thank you, everybody, for watching the Matt Black Show. 
And uh, right now we're going to go ahead and uh, shut it down and make sure you watch the recordings. And a little shout out to everybody overseas, you know, the Netherlands, Australia, um, all the other crazy people in London and, you know, Canada and all those people. But um, also a couple people from Brussels I watched the other day. But um, thank you once again and uh, good night.